In today's clip, I will take you step by step through how I drew this picture of a nose using this reference image. I would suggest you either have your own reference image or if you are welcome to use the reference image that I used in today's clip, you will find a link to this image in the description below. You will also find a link in the description below to all of the resources that I used in today's clip and a list of all the pencils that I used. So let's get on with the tutorial. So in this clip, we're going to talk through how to draw a nose and how to add color. I will be using Prismacolor Premium Pencils and I will put a full list in the description below. So the first thing that you should remember is when you add your sketch, do it very lightly. I've got a very light sketch here, as you can see. You should not have any very dark pencil lines because if you do, you will see that through your pencils and that applies not only to pencils but also to watercolours because that pencil line will show through your work. So I'm starting here with a colour called Rosy Beige and I'm then going on top with Clay Rose which is slightly darker and as you can see I'm not drawing a thick line. What I am doing is I'm just adding some really light tones on top with this drawing and all of the other drawings that I have done in this series. So I've got a picture of eyes and lips in this series, you start by adding really thin layers and you build those layers on top of each other. So I'm now working on the left hand side of the nose and I'm adding a colour called Nectar. This is the lighter side. On this picture that I have, the reference image, the light source is coming from the left hand side. So this side of the image or this side of the nose will be a lighter image. So I'm now going in around the nostril area with the pink. When I look at the reference image, I can see all kinds of colours and tones. And it's very important that you keep looking to your reference image and that you have a reference image because then you can see all the little changes in the structure of the nose. The nose is made out of a material called cartilage, which is a kind of bone, bony kind of flexy material. And it means that each individual nose is very different and has a different shape. So that's why it's very important that you look at the nose, you look at all the different colours because it will have a variety of shapes on the nose. So if you don't have a reference image, as I said, you're more than welcome to use the one that I have in the link in the description below. It's from a website called Pixabay and it means that you can download all of the images loyalty free or you could browse the website or, and find your own reference image. You will see on the right hand side that I have a swatch where I have experimented with all of the colours and the layering before this clip. Now, I would suggest that if you are working with a different reference image that you do the same. Before I do any drawing, I always make sure that I have my pencils ready and that means that I have them sharpened and also that I have experimented with my colour swatches beforehand and I've even made numerical notes there as you can see and that is so that I know what colour pencils I'm going to be using and which ones have layered up best with those colours. So I'm now adding some warm tones and colours around the nostril area <clears throat> and I've also shaded in the nostril area just so I know where those dark areas are so I'm adding some pinks, oranges, burnt ochre and I'm now going into the nostril with sepia not black it does look like it's black but it's actually sepia which is a very dark brown so I'm just adding that area now. As I said, we are just adding really light shades at the moment. We're not going in too dark with the pencil because if you add too dark a shade with the pencil and you dig in with your pencil, you will burnish the paper, which means you will damage the tooth of the paper. And then if you try to add another shade on top, it will not be a good shade. You will not be able to add another layer. So it's very important that you add really light shades on top of each other initially until you are really happy with your layers and then you can burnish or add more pressure at the end when you are happy with all of your layers. Now I'm going to add some French grey, some 50% French grey to the Filtrum 
and the philtrum is that area that kind of dimple shape between the nose and the lips and it's very important that you add that if you forget that then obviously it won't look 3d and it's very important that you look at where it's darker and lighter in response to looking at your reference image so that it looks more 3d and you will see also that i've shaded the right hand side of the philtrum darker because the light is hitting the left hand side of the face above the lips so again, all of these elements will make your face look more 3D. As I mentioned earlier in the clip, it's really important that you look at your reference image to determine where all of the areas are in the nose. And when I say areas, I mean the tonal areas, the tonal values, because that will build up the shape of the nose. Now, this model here has a fairly straight nose. There aren't any major lumps and bumps, so it's fairly easy to draw. But it's really important if you want to get a likeness in a portrait, and when we say likeness, it means that you get an image that's a recognizable image of that person that you are looking at absolutely every feature now my rule of thumb of getting a true likeness and when you're drawing a subject is that you should be looking 70 percent of the time and drawing 30 percent of the time which some people find quite difficult to get their heads around but that is a true way of getting a really good observational drawing and also it means that you'll get all of those lumps and bumps in the nose if there are any so that's why i just put that observational drawing next to the nose obviously it's not finished yet but just to get an idea and just to show you where all those tonal values are and sometimes in a drawing or a painting you can get to a stage where you look at the drawing or painting you think oh it doesn't look quite right but that's because you're still at that stage where you're building up those larger areas and you haven't added all the small details yet so as I said it's really important that you are looking for the majority of the time at your image and that's why it's really important you get a good reference image that has tonal values if you have an image that's what we call overexposed which means there isn't much tone in it or there isn't um what we call a strong light source then it's probably not a good idea to use that reference image So here is the finished drawing of the nose. As I said previously, I would not have been able to get it to look this three dimensional without the reference image. So it's really important that when you are producing an image like this, you have your reference image to hand so you can continually look at it. And as I said earlier, really you should be looking at your image between 50 to 70 percent of the time whilst you're drawing so you can continually check all those tones and highlights to get your image to look 3D. If you want to explore this theme further, you can visit my Patreon where I have real time clips of this clip as well as the eye and the mouth clip so that you can explore the theme further and improve your skills to a higher level. If you want to take your work to the next level, then why not join me on Patreon? You will have access to a wide variety of exclusive content, including real time tutorials, exclusive Patreon content, and also one-to-one -one feedback on your work. So why not become a patron to start the next step in your journey to drawing success?